And now, good evening, everybody. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and welcome to the MGM Grand here on the Vegas Strip in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Our main event should be a good one tonight. Round number one is now underway. All the talk is done. It is simply time to fight. Now he goes to the gut with a right hand. Teddy, I don't think there's any doubt about it in the matchup that we're seeing here tonight. It's clear who has the superior hand speed. What does the other guy need to do? He needs to let the faster guy shadow box. Step out of range where he can't use his speed. Good step back counter punch there. Well off the mark by Mike Tyson. Able to cover up along the belt line. Blocks that one. Very accurate two-punch combo by Mike Tyson. Good flush shot upstairs. There's the combo to the body. And that's what fighters do. Pulls the trigger right away after taking one. There's the headshot, but he parries it away. He brings an uppercut that really does damage there. He comes right back with a big one of his own. Not precise at all by Razor. Razor's right hand working well that time. He scored well. Teddy, I don't think he's got vision to stick it around too long. He's landed power punches early. Yeah, he wants to make it a quick night's work. Digs in with a good, solid uppercut after taking a shot. Final 10 seconds of round number one. To the belt line he goes with a left hand. Scored well up top. And we come to the end of round number one. Razor's got nobody to blame but himself. I mean, he got hit much too much in that last round. Well, he was throwing his punches from too close. He's given up his height. You're throwing from that close, and you're going to get counted over it if your opponent wants to do that. Guess what? His opponent wanted to. He had the desire to do that, and he took advantage. Here we go. Round two is underway. There's the uppercut, one of my favorite punches, and it works that time for him. Able to land the hook to the head. and showing you that sublime skill right now with that two-punch combo. A target on his head, and he places the hook right on it. Able to dismiss it. Halfway through this round here. Committing to the body work now. He lands the right hand. Took a shot. Now he gives a left. Lands a big hook. Keep your distance. Good looking uppercut that time. Oh, hands up, hands up. He engages in the clinch. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. Parries it away. Boom! Big shot upstairs. Keep moving. Final Keep 10 moving. seconds of round number two. Tyson's ability to get to his opponent worked out well there. He damaged him in that round. You have to be busy out there.
fucking beautiful. That was that was fucking amazing. I want another round like that. This is your fight, okay? And round number three is underway. A good block. A well-placed left hand up top. Tyson's blocking ability is doing well for him there. Scored well upstairs with the right hand. You gotta protect you. Comes across with a hook up top. Blocks that punch. Good exchange. He fires back. Teddy, why is it in boxing that there are so many distinct styles that are defined by geography or culture or ethnicity, where we have a Mexican-styled fighter, an Eastern European, you know, upright fighter, an American-styled fighter? Why is that? Because you are influenced by your surroundings, by the temperament of the people in your surroundings. Aggressive people, aggressive style. Very thoughtful people, people that are very cerebral, well, you're going to have a defensive style. You're going to have a very careful style. It's going to fit right in. Good smooth work by Mike Tyson. That's classic counterpunching. Yeah, what he did was he pulled that right shoulder back. You know, he just pulled it back, gave him the left shoulder, and then gave him the right hand. Tyson's now showing us something that could have a great impact on this fight, Teddy, and that's his ability to counter. Yeah, he's mixing it up a little bit. We know he can lead, we know he can get off first, but now this dimension serving him well. And that's the end of round three. Okay, okay relax now. How are you feeling in there? Stay alert. You gotta breathe, you got to breathe. All right, how you feeling out there? You know, you're not winning this fight, okay? You're not winning, he's beating you. I need you to throw more than one punch out there, okay? So round number four is underway. Mike Tyson's been looking very good early on. Teddy, you have him up three rounds to this. I think that's the only way you can have it right now, although I've thought that before, and the judges see it a different way, but He's been aggressive, and he's been effective. Finish with the hook! Quick snapping hook, and it does damage. Mike Tyson's crushed by a big right hand. Great hook to the head that time. Well, supposed to be fighting, but instead he's hugging. Tyson's defense is paying off now. Well off the mark by Mike Tyson. Let's see some more head movement, Jim. Come on. Hits him in the mug with the right. Ninety seconds to go in round number four. He gives as well as he takes. You saw it on that exchange. Combo, combo. Come on, come on. Dismisses his opponent's headshot. Tyson's defense did a good job there, able to avoid that punch. Mike Tyson's feeling the sting of that big uppercut. Good, strong uppercut. He comes right back with it after taking one. Missed the target with that hook. Last 10 seconds. Razor's going with a very efficient work rate in that last round. He chose his spots carefully, Teddy. Yeah, that's what I like to see. And that's what the judges are supposed to be looking for. You know, 
not just be overtaken by a guy just going out there like a mad hatter and just throwing punches, but placing the punches, strategically put them in the right spots. Good job. Scores well to the head with the right hand. Tyson's shown us that if he pulls this trigger, he's hitting that target. His accuracy is great. Well, that's part of his ability. You know, I mean, it's not just his hand speed and that he's technically good. You know, he's got a little bit of pop, but he knows when to throw. See, that's important, Joe, knowing when to let the hands go. He knows exactly what time it is. Oh, good exchange there. Huge uppercut by Tyson. Razor's able to land a good, solid left hand. Work the body. Work the body, kid. That's right. Body. A little defense turns into offense. He blocks the shot, comes right back with one of his own. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. Minute and a half to go. Punch didn't come close. Wow, what an uppercut. And a smart counter punch by Mike Tyson. Tyson's putting his punches together now. That's a nice combination. Flush right hand to the head. Do you see any way in which he can take his opponent's aggression and turn it against him? Yeah, the perfect way. I mean, could this be the start of a big comeback? He went from owning this fight to now nearly down and out. You know, that's what makes boxing so great. Yeah, you can come back just like that. One punch at the right time. That was at the right time. All right, here you go. I need you to keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Don't worry. All right, I just need you to focus. Tyson's recuperative powers are proving to be very strong right here. This is the start to the round he wanted to have, coming off a round where he was clearly damaged. He scored well after being hit himself. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. Hey, get out of there! Big shot, the right came clean. Look at that! Every punch landed in that combination, and he goes down hard. Get it! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get up, damn it! Tyson's going to have to pull himself together here. Now he beat the count, but still a lot of work to do. Yeah, a lot of work because he doesn't have the benefit of his legs. Can't move around there wobbly right now. So what he's got to do is grab on a little bit and walk. Walk to the rope. Kill some time. Make the referee come in between you and break you. Comes right back with a shot of his own. Tyson's doing a brilliant job with his head movement. He's employing top-notch defense right here and it's frustrating his opponent it is frustrating his opponent his opponent needs to make an adjustment of thinking right now and understand what's there not what's not he is damaged badly there he may hit the floor he's in bad shape he does not look good at all he could go down at any moment teddy yeah he wishes right now this was in an outdoor arena because maybe rain could come and stop it because i don't know what else could help him right now it appears that Mike Tyson has weathered that storm. Yeah, you're right, Joe, he has. But my question is, what about the damage that the storm did? Does that start to show itself? In other words, does Tyson get a little tentative now? Mike Tyson's got to feel that right there. He was just tagged by a big uppercut. Round comes to an end. 
You saw the knockdown there in that round. A little bit of a momentum game. For yeah, obviously it gives you confidence, but you know what? It can also be a momentum killer, believe it or not. I also, Joe, I've had guys where the worst thing that happened to them in a the fight was when they scored the knockdown because they thought it was just going to keep happening. And they thought about only the punch they landed, not how they set it up. So they got away from the game plan. Good return fire that time. That was not well targeted by Mike Tyson. Tyson's trying to get back in this round after being knocked down in the last round. But with just 60 seconds between rounds, Teddy, how much can really happen? How much can really benefit a fighter who was knocked down? Well, a lot has to happen. First of all, you hit him with that sponge. Some cold water on top of the head where you revigorate him a little bit. You know, get his senses back a little bit. And you have to talk to him. Once he calms down, once you physically get him back on track, you look to see if he's okay, and then you have to tell him why he got dropped to begin with. It's all right, keep moving, keep moving. At the halfway point of round seven. A big flush blow, the left hand by Razor. Body shot lands, it was the right. And now he scores with that left to the body. Good flush shot upstairs. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Okay, now we work, all right? We need to start throwing punches and punches. Let's go to work. All right, all right, you are dominating this fight. Keep it up and keep doing exactly what you're doing, baby. Listen, he's done. He is done. I want you to double up on that jab. Razor's starting to grab control of this fight now. Look at Teddy's scorecard as we start round number eight. Was a close fight, but just slowly creeping away from his opponent as he extends this lead. Well, this is where you start to see the personality. You know, where you start to have an X-ray, a portal into the soul of a guy. What he's made of, what his temperament is, the decisions he makes. He wants to be special. He's separating himself. Just ate a big uppercut right there. He had no idea it was coming his way. He does not look. Wow! Oh, and he goes down again. The question is, can he rise up and continue on? One, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. The fight is over. Tyson's unable to get up and continue on. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of knockouts, the winner is a That's what you want to see, a guy who can close the show and finish with style. He ends up a knockout victor tonight. And that's what his trainer wanted. His trainer was even telling him, step it up a little bit because he knew this was possible and they got it. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Always enjoy you tuning in. We'll see you next time at the fights.